comment further on number nine agenda? Yeah, we... we'll open that for okay. comment. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, any other public comments? Okay, we'll go ahead and open it up for board comments. Um, I have a couple of things, and one of them, they're more in the form almost of a question. Um, and I have the question and the, the concern that um, why Barbara would ask an employee about his education and job qualifications. Um, we don't know the exact education and experience requirements. And I don't understand why Bo would allow us to question an employee's background at a public meeting when we have no say, for, really. I mean, we, we can ask Kevin, because Kevin's the one that we have the right to, to elect and to give a position to. And I just, I think we're out of line, and I think that something should have been said at the time. Um, if, nothing else by, by Bo, that we were asking questions of an employee that we shouldn't be asking, unless we're going to suddenly make this a policy that we can ask all employees at a public meeting what they do and why they do it. So I, I, I have that one. Um, and then, and so then Nephi, I, I, I have a question for you as to um, when you brought up um, back on the October 14th meeting, asking Burton Weiss his, basic his, not his qualifications, but who he reports to and what he does. Um, and in at least the last seven years, I've never seen anyone from this board, um, quest from this board or in previous boards, question um, any news. We've never asked Desert Valley Times, we've never asked Mesquite Local, we never asked Mesquite Citizen Journal. We never asked Let's Talk Nevada. Um, and I'm wondering why we're doing it now, and is this also going to be a new policy that when somebody from the press speaks or asks a question, are we going to have them bring all that forward? And it's just concerns that I have. Well, you've made it very clear your position on bar, and as a sitting board member, I was curious as to how it worked, to put my own mind at ease, on how they were dividing things up over there. What Barb does in her free time and in any job that she has, uh, my understanding from something Bo said a while back is he talked to, if I remember correctly, the Attorney General and the Ethics Commission and they said it was fine for Barb to be on this board. Uh, certain people in this community keep pounding and pounding and pounding this issue and now they want to know how much it's costing the board to deal with this issue. I haven't been bringing anything up. I would like to just move on with the business of the board. We deal with water, not natural gas, not earthquakes. We're a water board, guys. It's, it's water. Um, as far as my comments about we give permits to anybody, I don't think we're in the business of discriminating. When the city of Mesquite issues a building permit and they come to us and ask for water, we review it and if everything's in line, we give them water. If somebody comes here and asks for water and they don't have building permits, are we going to give them water? So that question, I, I don't know how to answer that question. I never said we just give water and just throw water around because that's what we feel like. If the city of Mesquite, my whole point was the city of Mesquite issues building permits. If you have a problem with the truck stop, take it to the city. If the city of Mesquite approves the truck stop and they have all their permits and they come to us and ask us for water, why as a water board would we deny them water? Oh, I'm sorry, we don't want a truck stop in town. We're going to deny you the water. It, it, it doesn't work that way, does it? Did, did I miss something? Yes. 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 Yeah, I, oh, missed a lot. So we are going to deny him water because we don't want a truck stop here. No. No. Nobody said anything about a truck stop. Oh, we're going to deny him water because we don't have. Because you don't have it. We don't. I don't want to get into an argument with okay. you, Nephi, in this no, public and, forum. And that, and I just not, think you're wrong on certain assumptions okay. you're making. You think I'm wrong, okay. and that's okay. Yeah. That is your opinion. That doesn't make your opinion a fact, and it doesn't necessarily make my opinion a fact. But as far as permits go, <clears throat> all I'm saying is as a policy. If the city of Mesquite issues a building permit 
and they come to us and ask for water, if we have the EDUs, we're going to give them water. It's not a political statement, guys. It's just how the business is being operated. If, if you look at what I said, I said exactly that. Then I said I, it's up to the city that gives out the permits. You have no say in it. That's what I said. This is covered under agenda item A. If you want. Okay, then when it gets to agenda item A, we'll bring it up, um, and we can move on. As far as what Sandra said, I uh, asked Burton if there was any... I don't even remember the, exactly how I asked the question, but I was just trying to find out because Barb's an editor of a newspaper, Burton at least writes for the newspaper, Barbara's his boss, and I was just curious as a board member, and if I was out of line on asking that question, Sandra, I apologize for that. It had no bearing on anything other than I, I probably should have asked Burton outside of the meeting. So I will publicly apologize for uh, asking that question. It had nothing to do with anything other than I wanted to satisfy, in my mind, all the questions I've been hearing publicly about Barb's conflict of interest with her being an editor and Skeet Local News and being on this board. That's all that was. Um, I don't have a formal presentation, um, however I would like to keep the public up to date on the ethics complaint that Sandra Raymaker filed against me as I said I would at the last meeting. First, Sandra said at the last meeting that the Ethics Commission tried to deliver her complaint to me on November 16th, but that I was out of town. While I was out of town on November 16th, I find it hard to understand how a document could be delivered before it was mailed. The documents that I did receive on November 19th weren't postmarked from the Ethics Commission until November 17th. One day after Sanders said, <coughs> the Ethics Commission did try to email me the documents, which is not the formal method of delivery or receipt, uh, on November 16th, but used an incorrect email address. And that's hardly the same characterization that Sandra made at the last meeting. I do receive email regardless of where I'm at, if they use the right address. What Sandra also failed to tell the public at the last meeting when both of us made statements about this subject, and even though she knew it full well, is that the Ethics Commission denied, denied her original complaint, saying that the Commission, and I'll read the letter from the Ethics Commission, um, the Nevada Commission on Ethics has received your third party request for an opinion and this is a letter that they returned to Sandra K. Raymaker on October 22nd, 2015. The Nevada Commission on Ethics has received your third party request for an opinion. I have conferred with the Commission Council and we have determined that the Commission lacks jurisdiction to consider this RFO. It goes on to say, um, the Commission Council and I, oh, I'm sorry, under NRS 281A440 and NAC 281A400, the Commission has jurisdiction regarding public officers and employees for alleged violations of Nevada revised statutes. Chapter 281A, Ethics and Government Law. If the requester, which would be Sandra, provides a minimal level of credible evidence supporting the allegations, the Commission Council and I, that would be an attorney and the director, the executive director of the Commission, and I have determined that the evidence provided does not support the allegation that Vice President of the Virgin Valley Water District Board of Directors, Barbara Ellistad, used her position as a member of the board or otherwise benefited her private interests through her official duties in violation of NRS 281A020 and 281A420. 
the RFO does not provide evidence that subject inappropriately used her public position as a board member or referenced unique information not available to the general public. during the press conference to facilitate her private interest. Further, the RFO does not provide evidence that subjects private interest in the press conference or employment as a journalist received any benefit by way of comments made during a press conference through the use of her public position. The RFO infers that subject should have disclosed her public role during the course of her private endeavors. However, the ethics law would require the opposite. Disclosure during any public duties of a matter that affected her private interest as a journalist. that is signed by Yvonne Navarez Goodson, Executive Director. I'm not done. Sandra and her political allies were not happy or satisfied with that answer, which is a far different characterization than the Ethics Commission is further investigating Sandra's original complaint. It was a denial of the original complaint. So they filed an appeal of that decision once again. Excuse me, they did not file an appeal. Sandra filed an appeal of that decision once again, wasting taxpayer money and time. <laughs> While the original complaint accused me of using the word water in a press conference with Lieutenant Governor Hutchison, the appeal, right here, accused me of not using the word water in an article I wrote about the press conference. Miss Ellistad was at the press conference as a reporter, and I don't believe you were there, Sandra. But in the discussion on water, she appeared, she appeared to be speaking as a director of the Virgin Valley Water District. Appeared. Point of order. No. It was a video no. on the website. When Elstad wrote the referenced article, she left out the sus substantive discussion of water issues. The statement by Sandra that I appeared to be speaking as a director of the Virgin Valley Water District is totally and patently false and a figment of her imagination. When Ellistat quote out of the appeal, when Ellistat wrote the referenced article, she left out the substantive discussion of water issues. That's a true statement. However, I did not leave out a substantive discussion with water in my article because of any conflict of interest. I left out the wrongful statements of Mike McGreer's reference to a problem with water because I knew it was flat wrong. That knowledge was based on my research of and the reporting on the water district since 2007. As we extensively discussed at the October 20 meeting, which Sandra and McGreer caused a substantial amount of time, work, and research from the water <coughs> district staff, my statement to the lieutenant governor, as it turns out, was based on the truth. On November 24th, I responded to the Ethics Commission notification of a hearing by the board saying, quote, at no time since my employment by Battleborn Media on August 1, 2015, have I used my public position to benefit my private position, nor have I used my private position to benefit my public position. At no time in the future do I ever intend to. Commission Board will conduct its review of the jurisdictional determination, which is what they call it in the letter they sent me, in this matter on December 16th. As soon as possible afterwards, I will let the public know what the Commission decides one way or another. Sandra, I have one question. 
can't really, this is not an agenda item. Why are we it's asking not, questions? She to, asked us questions. Sandra, can you please explain to me and the public the pecuniary aspect you discuss in your appeal of the Ethics Commission denial of your original complaint? Is it to be on the agenda? Yeah. What is yeah. the pecuniary yeah. aspect the you agenda. reference? It's not on the agenda. Go on, Barbara. Make an opinion. You didn't interrupt you, something. Yes. Thank you. Um, this, this is an item that the board could decide to put on a future agenda. I'm not exactly sure how far anybody intends to go with this. Um, it seems that there's already been a lot of time spent on this. Yes, um, there has been way too much time. So, I mean, I, this is this is a decision for the board to make. If, the, if there's merit to this or if there's something the board feels that needs to be addressed concerning this issue uh, beyond what's already been done, then it can be put on a future agenda item. To, to say that a board member or any member of the public can't express views um, for or against a position is, is not proper. It's, it's, it's open for public comment. It's open for board comment. There is a right to speak to issues that are relevant. Um, if this was not relevant to anything related to the district, then yes, the president could properly say, we're not going to listen to that. It's not within you know, the, the authority of, of the board. Um, my preference is that if there's going to be these kinds of prepared comments, as I've mentioned in the past, those should be agendized. Um, it seemed that Sandra had some things that she had prepared. She was reading from some notes. Barb the same. Those, as I've said in the past, those things should be agendized. If there's backup materials, those should be provided and included with the agenda. Um, so. The reason I, I, I've mentioned those things multiple times in the past, and so how, how you guys decide to act on that is, is up to you. Um, Nephi, your position as president is to basically direct the discussion. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to de defer to the board and what it may